He says if, if successful, the grant would provide $200,000 to $400,000 for the deconstruction of high priority streets in the village. I'm going to start this way and pass these out. These are the streets that are covered. There's pictures of the streets. Just one thing of note that, to let the board know when you look at the pictures. The first picture is Merrill Avenue, and I was concerned because the area that is pictured does not appear to need repair, but, and I did just clarify this with JW, it is beyond the intersection. It's down by the water tower, by Arrowhead Park. If, you, if anybody goes down there, you'll notice it's not paved. That's the area that they're talking about as far as the picture from Merrill. Just to let everybody else know in the audience, the areas that they're talking about are portions of Clyde Avenue, 216th Court, 224th Place, <coughs> Shirley Avenue, Patterson <coughs> Avenue, 222nd Place, Mail Avenue, and Thiessen Avenue. Those are the areas that are addressed in this grant. Yes. So I just ask if you, once you guys are done, if you can pass them back this way so Trustee Burgess will have a chance to look at them. No, that's fine. Does anybody have any questions about this? Trustee Burgess. I was reading, now we and not looking at this one, be wheelchair accessible for just that area. Does that, um, this money that we're asking for has nothing to do with the money that we're talking about getting for 223rd Street all the way from Torrance into Cornell, correct? No. And that's what I'm saying, it has nothing to do with that. Right. It's separate. Okay, so then uh, we applied for that grant. Now this is a grant for 400,000, and uh, this is, is whatever we're gonna get, are we going to use TIF, I mean, I mean that TIF money? Yes. Didn't, so we don't have no idea about that. And also, I didn't get a chance to ask about the first one, same thing with the first one. Are we gonna use MFT money for the 150,000 for the 20%? Um, that, I say before, I have not sure, it just identifies that the corporate authorities have identified specified funds. Now, um, JW did state that it was a general fund, but I'm assuming MFT, based on what you can use MFT funds for, that would be an allowable expense, but I don't know what has been decided. Okay. That's what I'm saying. If we don't get the whole amount or the 80% that we have to invest, are we going to use MFT or you said general funds, are we going to use it? Okay, that's And uh, these areas right here that we were looking at right now, I didn't see the BG eligible. I'm looking on Thies and Paxton, Shirley, Merrill Avenue, I didn't see the BG eligible. Not aware that that would that it became a CDBG eligible uh, area over, especially over Thesa and uh, Shirley. Right. Okay, so we so we are eligible. Use these. Okay, because I don't want to start and get the get everything started and find out we're not eligible. Because I didn't know that Lisa and Shirley had became but before they work, and that's where it is in the map in the office, uh, Sherry's office. You can see where TIF. I mean, I'm sorry, where the uh, CDBG eligibility is at. Okay, so if it can be, if it became that way, then fine. I didn't know that. They require a representative to come down to verify that you know we actually in fact the 
application was corrected, I mean, was completely corrected and it included the funds that, the, you know, that you're talking about, the trustee so you, To get the CDBG fund, we have to use MFT funds. Yes. I think what Trustee Burgess's question is, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but the area that's going to be serviced has to be at a certain economic level. And if you look at the, uh, the resolution, it says that the service area is predominantly a residential area with at least 50.3% of population residing around the service area being considered of low or moderate income. So they, those areas may not have been at that income now, but they are now. Okay, they weren't uh, a couple of years ago. Right. Because we tried to do that, and uh, it was now, well, that's why I was just wondering, when did that happen? So if it happened, fine, you know, uh, but if not, then when we get to that area, we would have to actually use MFT and do we have, you know, so that's right. So I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Any other questions? Can you repeat those streets? Sure. It would be portions of Clyde Avenue, 216th Court, 224th Place, Shirley Avenue, Paxton Avenue, 222nd Place, Merrill Avenue, and Beeson Avenue. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? Moving right along. Public comment. Um, I ask that all comments and questions be directed to the chair. Each speaker will be given three minutes to comment on topics of their choice. Each speaker will be allowed one opportunity to speak. And as always, I will be writing the questions down to pass them on to the mayor. director and the Robinson Engineering decide together. From what I understand, they have a rotating list of streets that to be prepared, but that list is there, but if there's a street that's a higher priority, those streets go up on the top of the list. Now, as far as Navajo and Apache, I don't know where they fall on that list, but I will pass your, put your questions on to the mayor, and then he can put on the answer. Oh, I'm sorry, and Carl too. Medication, allergies, 
And if oxygen is used, where the oxygen equipment is located within the home. The resident should receive a sticker which is placed on a window so that it can be used, seen by the emergency responders as stated in the form. I again spoke to the village clerk, Debbie Williams, two months later in person after village meeting and told the village clerk that we did not receive a sticker and I was informed that she would check into the matter. It is now March 2017, which is a little over six and a half months, which is totally unacceptable. And my business, a disabled husband, still has no sticker, nor received any reason for the delay from your village clerk. I am so disappointed in how my husband and I have been affected by this delay and the actions of the village clerk, Debbie Williams, to assist us in the matter. This I would address to the mayor, and to the I'll address it to you. My one question to you is, how can any resident even begin to request specific village information when six, over six months have gone by after turning in a simple form that my husband filled out all medical information that should be here somewhere? Who has it? But I'll continue. To your village clerk, and still my husband and I cannot get a simple reply from the village clerk as to why the, the long and unacceptable delay in the matter. You can give that to the mayor or you can answer. I really don't care at this point. I'm just aggravated. Seeing how this issue has affected us, one can understand why residents have no other recourse but to FOIA this village administration. I also resent the term fools used by our, by our mayor, describing the people who request FOIA. Residents are not costing the village money when requesting a FOIA. It is the lack of administration, I believe, not responding to residents. And I'd really like to know where my form is because it's got information on my husband that somebody here has. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but we, we do a lot of time. But, for a but I don't handle this program, so I won't turn it over to the village funds and make you address First of all, I apologize for you not getting your sticker, but I, I will tell you the very next day after we spoke, I contacted CalCom. I don't have anything to do with that sticker program. That's a program that was instituted by CalCom. All I did was share it with the residents, and I did tell them how disappointed I was that you did not get your sticker, and I told them that they should immediately follow up on that. And since I followed up the last time, and this is the last, since then I haven't heard any communication from you or CalCom, I was assuming the problem had been taken care of. Well, I'm very sorry that it has not, and know that your personal information has not been given to anyone other than CalCom. That's a program that they started, that they're responsible for. My only role in this is to provide the information to the residents and then pass the applications to CalCom. So I apologize if you have not been taken care of, but I guarantee you this time, I will call them tomorrow. I will let them know that you came to a meeting and you are very upset about it, and I will, I will follow up to make sure that it's taken care of. I, I understand. If, I didn't hear from you again, so I assumed it was okay. But I guarantee you this time, I, 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 since I didn't get a back and forth from you before, I will follow up until I see that you got your sticker. Thank you. I'm also going to ask that the village administrator follow up with CalCom because as the village clerk stated, this is not her program, this is not her responsibility, and I understand that even though she was the one to present it, and her name was mentioned, I believe, six times in that statement, it is not her responsibility to follow up. So, and again, maybe just a... And FYI to all the residents, if you present a problem to the board and you don't get an answer within six months, other people constantly come out and ask their questions. I would suggest maybe doing that. The six months, especially in an emergency situation, well, that's that's a lot. And I definitely think that you should have followed up with and that somebody should contact you. So, no, I, I, but exactly, but it's not the village clerk's job. So we're gonna have the village administrator. We're gonna have the village administrator follow up on it because again, this is.
And to my list, there's three empty houses in a row, which are right next. They are, one of them is next to the empty lot that still has the shed on it, but the house that burned probably three years ago. Okay? Now, I understand there's nothing I can do about empty houses. I don't know if they're there. If they have somebody who's trying to sell it for them, but that house, there's a house next to the field, and I can believe if I brought this up before, I follow the bill call for the police twice. That blue house next to the field on Navajo, on the east side of the street, next to the gray house, who now has someone living in it, that gosh darn front door is seems to be always open. The windows are smashed. It's a one level. Now the kids on my block are starting to throw rocks at one of the houses and break their windows just because they got lucky because I was watching a play. And all of a sudden they picked up stones. I'm not saying rocks, but they picked up stuff and I could hear the crash. I went outside, and I used a naughty name for the kids, not knowing who they were or where they were from. I believe they were from right across the street. And one of them was. But the mother started yelling at me from her car. Why am I yelling and using all kinds of profanity? I used one word, and I corrected her <coughs> from across the street. No pain involved here, Larry. But, I mean, I told her, watch your kids. <coughs> if you're out here standing by your car and your kids are down the street throwing rocks, where are they supposed to learn some responsibility? Teach your kids to, look, to leave other people's property alone. I mean, that house on the Navajo needs to be boarded if it can't be torn down. Thank you. Ms. Clark. Just to clarify, you said that it's it's on Navajo on the east side of the, the street, and it's a blue house next to a field, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been empty for a couple of years. Yeah, the church. Yeah. 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 Agenda item number uh, two. You indicated there's a letter that was received on the back of whatever you were reading. And I'd like to know what the date on that is. And the reason being is that you indicated that this had to be taken care of. Uh, it was due in on the 17th, so they needed the information on the 14th. And again, we're waiting for the last minute and then we're going to have to come up with three megabytes. What's the holdup? Why wasn't it brought forward to even earlier? The second one on the CDBG, uh, not the CDBG, I'm sorry. On uh, Mr. Ayers and Mr. Ayers with their uh, sticker for the window from Calcom. Calcom has failed us again. There are multiple people in the village that have oxygen. I'm one of them. And um, all I can tell you is in the meantime, reach your oxygen uh, in place. You can get it from whoever your vendor is for um, your oxygen equipment. <coughs> but I think uh, Calcom Over. They're not doing their job totally. And I understand what you're saying about the book that she doesn't, it's not her responsibility. But when she accepted the responsibility from Calcom to handle this from the resident to her, to them, she, she accepted that responsibility. And somebody has to stand up for the village from within the soft village. Thank you.
The, your first question, just to clarify, you said it was on um, item number two. The date of the letter is March 1st. Now, as far as why it's coming to us now, it's just, you know, just only been a few days. Um, I think that this is a relatively new program. I don't know if this is something that maybe the engineering company just discovered. I'm not privy to why, but we received this letter March 1st. We're trying to do this as quickly as possible. And I understand a lot of times things are kind of presented at the last minute, but this is giving the board a week to, they've had it since Friday to review. If they do have any questions, they have a week to contact the village administrator or the um, engineer themselves. But I think overall, if we have to maybe take a week and only get a week to review something and we can get some extra money for some extra streets in South Village, I think everybody can agree that that's, that's a good idea. Uh, but again, I think this may have been something that was just presented. I don't know if I find a different answer on the sheet. If I might, uh, Jim Gardner and his staff have people that constantly look at grants uh, specifically. Sometimes they come across and that's what happens. Thank you. Uh, I was uh, talking about the uh, CPG program. Now, just so everybody uh, heard about it, more about it, that's when I first came into the village. I think when I started with CPG program, most of it was three years old or five years old. Though. And the CPG program, I don't know if you know it or not, when it came into the village, it was my remodeled house. That's what it came in. It went from that to the street. But when they tell you that you got to put a light on the floor, that's what it means. You can't go to work in January. So when they ask you that, you might not know the correct answer. Believe me when I tell you that, no. Mr. Meyer will tell you right there. Right there. That's how we, that, that's how we met through the CBG program in 1989. That's how we met. The other thing here is that some of these things that we stand up here asking me questions about, I don't know, but I have this way of mind. I want to know something about something. I go to the person the wreck, so to stand up here and try to make that person look bad. Don't do that. That's right. not what you need. That's not what this meeting is about. Believe me when I tell you, it's not what this meeting is about. If you want to know something about what's going on in the village, uh, whatever with the water, go to the water. There he is. Go to the water. If you want to know something about the fire, go to the fire. If you want to know something about who ain't paying any taxes in the village, come to me. I tell you, they've got a whole list of them. But that's what we need to straighten out about. on the topic of their choice. Last, uh, two weeks ago, I had come up to the mic and made some statements, and two of the trustees were rather upset, but they're the same two trustees that fought real hard to get that in there, that each speaker can speak on any topic of their choice. Okay. So, just so they know, that's what we did. Uh, the second thing that I'd like to ask is, Christmas Day, there was a mishap of a building being hit by a car that to this day is still boarded up. Right. And why has that building not been repaired or insurance taken over and fixed that building? If it had been any other business or building, it would have been fixed or something done right away. Um, and I just think it's been going on three months, and I think that would be sufficient time that it should be repaired. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. As far as the public comment, I think we addressed that two weeks ago. I don't think we need to go any further. And as far as the building, I don't have an answer for that. I would assume that that's a code question. 
I don't know if JW, if you want to follow, but I don't have an answer for that. Okay. I have for that. Uh, first of all, I want to say the uh, public works meeting will be tomorrow here at 7 p.m. at the Village Hall. And uh, also, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm still waiting on an answer about the consensus voting on the water fund distribution. Uh, I know you and uh, the mayor last week stated that I had got it. I looked through my notes. I did not get the one for January. so. I would appreciate it if I've been asking for about two months now. So just wanted to let you know I came in yesterday, but no one was here to try to go over it. But I can't make it here every day. And the last question, I just wanted to, I mean, I appreciate the resident that made a conscious effort to see how long it takes to fix something in the village or to uh, repair um, property. But if we had that type, we would have the we would have the abandoned homes, the homes that are uh, there are homes that are unrepairable that's in this village, and we just don't have the money to, to knock them down. We should be worried about things that are a hazard. I've seen homes that burnt down or burnt up, but they were not taken down because of lack of funds from the village. So if we were worried about those types of things where the eye has to where a child or someone can go in there and get hurt, that would be something that we should really, really look at. But when it comes to insurance, I don't know about you, but a lot of times when you try to get things done, the insurance company has to cross off their T's and dot their I's to make sure. So that was between the business owner and the insurance. Anytime that is like that. So it's not a matter of as was stated before, I should go in my pocket and go ahead and get it fixed. I don't own anything. I just rent. So to make that an issue, I appreciate that. We, I wish we can, can, can make a lot of things that an issue in the village that we can have our eyes looking for a lot of different infractions that go on. But unfortunately, we can't do it all. We have one person that actually goes through code. But I appreciate um, the resident looking out. appreciate the resident. Uh, bringing it to the attention, and uh, I just hope that the insurance company and the owners can come to some conclusion. But thanks very much. You were looking for the consensus from the January one, right? You said you received everything. Else? Yes, I'm looking for January's um, consensus voting. I wanted to see who actually did the voting, which trustees voted yay or nay, because I was not informed. Um, I didn't get a call, or a letter, or anything like that, of the withdrawal. So it's, it was told last week by the mayor that uh, I did get a copy, and I did not. I have since January, I told everyone involved my, my email address, and um, because the one that I had, Outlook just doesn't work. So that was that's what I had said, it. and and the mayor knows what I'm talking about. So I, maybe you could. I just, that's what okay. I said. Yeah. I just copied you on the email. So you well, Mr. Fairman knows about it, and so. The finance director, I copied you on the email, and I asked that the entire board be provided with the information that you see. Okay. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Just a few things. First of all, Neighborhood Watch is very excited about our concert that will be coming up on this coming Friday at Breakover School at 6 o'clock. The doors will open at 530. Salt Village would like to welcome radio personality and Stella Award winner, Ms. Daryl King, 102.3 FM. She's never been to Salt Village before. She's been announcing on her radio show, and we are very excited as she is to come to Salt Village. I want to thank all of the people that have uh, been working with my co-chair and myself, Trustee Ed Myers, to make sure that this program is disseminated, the information all throughout the village. Yesterday, my um, associate and myself went all over the village to put these 
fly us up and these uh, plug us up about the concert that's coming up. We've been back around today. They were all torn down again. They took them all down around the village. So, you know, with that being said and done, we have gone through other measures to actually take them to the homes to let residents know about the concert. The concert is promoting our theme, unity in the community. We need unity in the community of Salt Village. We are encouraging everyone of every race, religion, and ethnicity to come out and show our youth in Salt Village that we are uh, one, we can have one mind, and we can't necessarily understand one another, we can get along because we all do live in this village together. So again, the concert is Friday. We are very, very excited. We can't wait to have Willie the Entertainer. This young man has been on the uh, Ellen Show. He's been on the uh, Good Morning America Show. His resume is phenomenal. You can Google him, Willie the Entertainer. He is phenomenal. He's a great inspiration to young people. We have representation from every school and we have different churches that's gonna participate in the village as well as performers outside of Salt Village. So Neighborhood Watch, that's what we do. Also as a commissioner for the village with the Human Relations Commission, that is our motto, bringing unity to the community. Unity and diversity to the community. So I wanna applaud and thank the Human Relations Commission. I see some commissioners out there. Our president commissioner, Frank Williams, right here. We have Commissioner Renee Richardson over there, raise your hand. Commissioner Latanya West, she's not here tonight. And we have our Neighborhood Watch Block Club captains here. Of course, the Griffiths holding it down over there on Brookwood. We have our Block Club captains. And they work hard throughout this village to uh, remind the residents to turn their front porch lights and their back porch lights on. I also want to thank uh, the Chair for Housing and all of the housing commissioners that see. I see Heidi Parker, Commissioner, Gary Holden, all of them that work with us with housing to make sure that these are back vacant homes. I talked to a resident on this week and she wanted to know about a house and why it had a green sticker on the door. So I was letting them know, if you see somebody in that house and there's a green sticker on that door, I need you to call the police because that house has been identified as vacant and no one should be living in there. So I appreciate the committees and the commissions that are working together to show unity. And I want us all to come out. I think that uh, ESDA and the police department, along with the fire department, will be there, the superintendent, Talk with Dr. Reverend, uh, Dr. Navarre over in Bloom today. They're all excited about the concert. We're trying to do something positive. We're trying to do something good and great. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome to come. I have offered and put out an olive branch. Anybody wanted to be on the program could be on the program. So I'm hoping that you all will not continue to tell people that the concert is canceled, the concert is not gonna happen, that right. is a lie. Right. The concert is in full swing, it's on the marquee, right. and we will be there strong on Friday, March the 10th. We're gonna keep on paying the information down or not, we're gonna keep on pushing that that concert will go on, and there will be unity among those that wanna have it. And that concludes my statement. Thank you, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, on the damage houses, every time the fire fire, the fire department gets house and it burns to a point where it cannot come occupied, and, and that, that house is, if it has insurance the next day, I personally contact the insurance company and inform them of it. And if it's uh, a point where we have to bring in fire marshal, uh, then the fire marshal come in and I do know for a fact there's three houses in this town that the Illinois State Fire Marshal still has a hold on them and they probably won't do anything. Uh, I will contact the fire marshal tomorrow about the uh, three houses and I do uh, I definitely agree with Mrs. McClark. One house over there needs to be taken down and taken care of. And there's a couple other ones that uh, need to be taken down and taken care of. The rest of the houses, we, if we find out that it's a abandoned house and the house is broken into, and we've had uh, over, Carrie, what did I do, 18 of them, I think. 18 of them that have uh, deliberately and intentionally set fire to those houses, which turned over to Cook County, and with Cook County Housing Authority and our Housing Authority were working and getting those taken down. It, it's a slow process, but I do 100% agree with you. Yes, it's hazardous, and I, if there, I, 
any other suggestion, I'll be glad to try to try to get it down faster. Uh, I know our attorney has two. There's two of them. I think there's two of them that is in court. Uh, and they're supposed to be working on it. And one of the gentlemen, uh, he's going to be confined for a while, but uh, we'll probably end up uh, going to the bank. The bank has insurance on it. The law says uh, the, the bank has to carry insurance on its house. And that's the hardest thing to do is find it out. The bank, you got to go through a series of stuff to find out the bank and the person that had had it, and then you go after, after the bank. And if you ever dealt with banks, it's pretty rough to get them in court to read anything. Uh, the fire department, the second one, the fire department is still a second application. Uh, the fire department, uh, anytime between 6 to 6 in the day, drop by. And pick up an application and or process it. <clears throat> Once we process it, the first step you would be is through a, a background check. You pass the background check, then you go through the uh, ah, crux. And then you go through a drug test, you pass the drug test, then you go through a physical. <clears throat> Last time I had 12 candidates, and <laughs> half of them didn't even make it through the background check. If you have a felony behind you, you cannot become a firefighter as the, our police officer and several other things. Then we uh, did the drug test and I lost another four or five of them. So end up, uh, 12 of them, I ended up bringing on two. Uh, those are not too good. So we'll try again, see what we can do. Uh, so if you have any uh, young people, uh, men or females, we don't care about they fight fire. And we will train them for this uh, state of Illinois Department. We'll train them that will become a certified firefighter within a year, and then we go on to advanced firefighters in two years. And then you can uh, uh, section off in various stages. Once again, if you know anybody, any, uh, any friends with anything, they live within the boundary village of Salt Village, please come to the fire station. Thank you, that's all I have. The What's Happening Now is back there with a list of um, the Easter Egg Hunt for Soft Village, the Easter Egg Hunt for the church, the Unity and Beauty concerts on there, and also there are three events that are happening. The Property After Death Workshop, which is also a bilingual presentation. That flyer is by itself that's back there, so just for anybody to know. There's also going to be a spring craft and vendor show. There's a flyer back there for that. And the Comcast Cares Day, that's going to be Saturday, April 22nd. Anybody who would like to come out and volunteer, the Comcast company is actually going to come out and they're going to help us kind of clean up our community. So anybody who would like to volunteer, please contact the village clerk. Also, important election information is on the bottom of this page. So anybody who has any questions about grace period, registration and voting, the last day the register to vote passed. So um, anything beyond that, if you have any questions, this is where you should look. And also just a reminder to the trustees that these two resolutions will be on the agenda to vote for next week. So if you have any questions, please reach out to the village administrator or to Jim Zarn personally. And with that, I answer a motion to address. All those in favor?